Hey everybody, I'm Eduardo Talbert with MonsterTutorials.com. Today's tutorial is a really cool one. I did not make this up. I was uh, going to all the different forums, the Halloween forums, the Haunted House forums, and also on Pinterest, and I kept seeing this and I thought it was fascinating. And it was one of those fake fires with the glowing embers. So I wanted to do that tutorial, like do it myself, see if I could make it, but add, of course, the Monster Tutorials extra flavor. So that's what we're going to do today, and it's this fake fire down here with the cauldron and it works it has light so if you can see that I'm going to turn the lights down in a second so you can see there's light in here and it also has a feature for smoke to come out of the coals and out of the cauldron so watch this video that I shot downstairs Okay, let's get started with this tutorial. For this one, we're going to need just some gloves. This is like, a, what do you call it, like stretch wrap, uh, shrink wrap. Great stuff, it's just expanding foam, you know, crack sealer. I have two strings of light, I have orange and purple. And orange. See that? All right. A bowl, any kind will do. And I have a cauldron here that I found really cheap, like 40% off of one of the craft stores. Okay, since I use this bowl actually for eating, and my kids and my wife and I eat from stuff we make here, I'm going to cover it with the shrink wrap just for safety, uh, because we're going to cover it with the great stuff. The great stuff is supposed to be non-toxic after it cures and it dries but there's no point in taking any chance, especially with your family's health. So the first thing I'm going to do is wrap the outside of this with the shrink wrap. There you go. Now we're just going to smooth it up, smooth it up as much as we can. Perfect. For this next step, we're going to take the great stuff and just cover the whole bowl with an even layer. Uh, the thing that I recommend is just putting like bunches of it instead of straight lines. If you put a straight line and it gets squiggly, it'll look kind of weird because you don't get logs that are kind of squiggly like that. It'll look more like a like some guts or a, or a worm. So just do bunches. Don't forget your gloves. This stuff is not good for your skin. It'll be days before it comes off. Okay, I got this covered all over and I plugged some of the holes and I try to keep it as random as possible so that it looks like a pile of charcoal and not like a bunch of little snakes running around. Okay, I let this dry overnight and now it's like solid. So let's unmold it and uh, see how it comes out. So there you go. The only thing is that some of this stuff on the inside is still not cured. So I'm going to peel off this layer and let the rest of it cure. Okay, for this part, I'm going to take a spray paint. This is flat black. I think I have a little bit. I hope it lasts the whole, the whole thing. And here's the shell, nice and solid. And uh, we're going to very lightly spray. The trick here is to spray it super lightly. We're not going to cover it in black. It's just to take this uh, yellowish color off. And also, I'm going to spray it sideways so that it doesn't go in the cracks in between. Because the trick of a good set of like glowing embers is that the glow comes from the spaces in between. So I'm going to spray right at the cracks instead spray across. So this has been lightly sprayed. I might do a little bit of, of another coat, but to add it and make it more realistic, 
I brought my grandmother's ashes from downstairs on the mantle and we're going to add some of this onto it and it will stick and give it texture. And I'm just kidding, these are not my grandmother's ashes. This is from the fireplace because we had a fire last night. Oh, it's really looking like a pile of coals, doesn't it? Oh, well, this side draws thoroughly, which is kind of, it's not wet or anything, but while it dries and sets, I'm going to take a drill bit that is about a little bit smaller than the size of my LEDs. And we're going to make, I have 15 LEDs, so 15 holes equally spaced. Uh, and just make about, a, say about a quarter inch to a half inch hole. Make sure you don't go through. We're just going to secure the LEDs into the pile of embers. And this is soft enough where you can drill it just with your hand. But if it's not, just take a drill and do it with the drill. Now I'm going to insert all the LEDs into the different holes that I made. What I'm going to do is push it in. Just like that. You see that is in there? Pull it out, check it out. Into that little hole right there. And we're going to secure all 15 around. Okay, here you go. That is all wired all the way around. I try to spread the LEDs as evenly as possible. And here's the control, which we can stick inside. So this part of the fire is done. Okay, I'm turning the lights up. You can see some of it glow through there, but let me turn the lights up and you can see what it looks like. And I'll get better night shots when we're done. There is our, our wiring. So this part of the fire is done. You can use this as it is, but we're going to go to part two now where we attach the cauldron to the top. Well, that turned out really cool. Here's our pile of coals. Uh, now we're going to do part two, which is add the cauldron on top. So I'm going to set this aside for now. This part, we need a cauldron. piece of hose, the purple lights, that's it. So let's try to bring fog from the fog machine under the fire, under this guy, right? And then we're going to pipe it through the top into the cauldron. So we're going to have fog coming out of the cauldron and some fog coming out of the pile of ashes right so we're going to be drilling some more holes here first thing I'm going to do is drill a hole where I can put this hose here on the bottom of the cauldron and I'm using a spade bit for that that closely matches the diameter of this hose there you go okay now, the fit you want it to be snug but it doesn't have to be tight it's not the smoke leaks it's okay because we need smoke coming out of the fire and coming out of the cauldron. Looks like it fits like a glove. See it? All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spray paint this hose black. Next part, I'm going to drill a hole through the top of the cold right here in the middle so that the hose can come out of a cauldron and into the coals. I just marked where the hole needs to go. It's right here. So now we need to just drill a hole here on the side to make the hose come out. spray painted the hose black as you can see what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover the end with some electrical tape black electrical tape and the reason is I don't want the smoke to shoot straight up when we turn the fog machine off instead we're going to cover it we're going to drill some holes here I want more smoke coming out of the cauldron than the fire so I'm going to do about six or eight or nine holes 
on the part that is inside the cauldron and then just about four or five here on the bottom that go into the pile of coals. Well, I couldn't find electrical tape so I'm using duct tape. Okay, we have the hose is black and has the holes made. But I'll tell you something about the fog machine. I'm using this uh, Chauvet DJ, which is pretty good and you can get it at a good price, probably at the same price uh, using one of my links, then you can get like the cheap one, the generic one you find at Walmart. But here, what happens is most people will try to put the hose directly onto the fog machine. That's not how it works. What the fog machine does, it heats up the fog fluid and shoots it out like uh, hot steam. And it's only when it mixes with air that it becomes fog. So if you cover that with the hose, all that, uh, all that steam of that fog liquid will just cool down as it travels down the thing and you'll get no fog. So you have to leave a space between where it comes out and where the hose takes it up so it can mix with air. So we'll be setting it up about two or three inches after the outlet to make the most fog. All right, so obviously the little hose works. You see it come out of the holes. I also made two holes here. I wanna see if that works too. So keep an eye on these two right here. So let's look at these two holes right here. And it comes out too. So these two right here, those two right there are going to fill up our pile of holes. And the other uh, four are going to go into the cauldron and they won't shoot straight up. As you saw, they shoot sideways. So let's assemble this and see what it looks like. Right, we already drilled for the hose, so I'm just gonna fit it on the, through the hose that we already built in, that we already drilled. And be gentle when you bend your hose so you don't kink it. If you kink it, you're not gonna get any fog going to your cauldron. on top, two holes down here. Cauldron. Okay, so I'll put the cauldron on top of the pile. As you can see, the hose is coming right through. So the last thing I'm going to do is just drop these purple lights. If you're just gonna let this sit there, you don't have to glue them, but you can also tape the lights to the inside of the cauldron. See that light up? I can turn this light off here. Okay, so now let's see what happens if you put any fog in it. Okay, so this is pretty much done, but I haven't set it up to show you how it works. So I'm gonna go downstairs, find a volunteer witch, and we'll uh, see how this turned out. So follow me downstairs. I think that turned out really cool. That's our tutorial for today. The glowing embers with the witch's cauldron with the fog machine. So if you like that, give it a thumbs up as always. And I'm Eduardo Talbert and I'll see you next time here on monstertutorials.com. See ya.